This is the next uh, video in a series on looking at uh, fasting, the biochemistry of fasting and why that's hitting such a big, uh, a big buzz on YouTube and internet. What you see in front of you here is a um, Uh, just one version of the metabolism, and it mentions several of the uh, bioindicators that you'll see here. Before I list those bioindicators, I'll just, let's navigate the, uh, the larger part of this chart. You've got autophagy here, uh, translational control and cell division here. In other words, growth, cell growth, which is required before you get to cell division, um, is on the left side. Autophagy is here in the middle and survival signals are over on the right. Now, at the decision point between autophagy and translational control and cell division, or the growth uh, pathway, is a thing called TORC, T-O-R-C-1. That is um, another term you may hear is mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin. That, that's the C1 actually stands for complex one. There's a complex two over here, which is more involved in the uh, survival pathway. As you see, rapamycin is here. And I think I'm going to have to do a separate video on rapamycin, just the maybe the 30 second uh, story on rapamycin. Um, is it is a, an antibiotic that was discovered on the Easter Islands. Um, in a bacteria. Uh, long story short, it, it was also discovered to be a strong um, uh, anti-cancer drug. Why? Because it shut off mTOR, or the TORC1 component of mTOR, and stopped this translational control and cell division. Because you think about it, that's exactly what cancer is. It is uncontrolled uh, cell growth and cell division. If you can shut this uh, section down and send it over towards the autophagy mode, you will shut down cancer growth. That again is exactly what happened. But it's a longer story than that and that's not for this video. For this video I'm trying to just give a little bit of a, a background uh, on uh, the research around this area and how it happened. I'll be spending a lot of time covering a video by Dr. David Sabatini. At, um, he's at Harvard and MIT. And uh, actually, I'm going to cover a video that he did, which goes into detail on mTOR and some of the uh, discoveries around that space. Now, <clears throat> Here's a much more detailed uh, uh, coverage of the metabolic pathway. This is the, um, the bloodstream, the serum. As you see, insulin and growth factors like uh, the pituitary hormone, uh, growth hormone, float in the bloodstream. They are picked up by some insulin uh, receptors, some growth factor receptors, and they can then head... Uh, head our metabolism down this pathway, which involves mTOR and, um, again, the decision point of um, growth, cell growth versus autophagy, which you see over here. Um, you see a lysosome here. Just to remind you, a lysosome is a vacuole or it's a little suitcase. It's the recycling bin of um, old chemicals, old cell parts, so what mTOR does is this. It looks to see if there's growth hormone or growth uh, factors coming from um, the pituitary and other areas. It also looks to see if there's plenty of um, recycling components in the lysosome. And it looks to see if there's plenty of energy, glucose. And if there are those three components, then it sends the metabolism down into protein translation and uh, cell replication. If not, then it, heads, it sends it over towards autophagy and uh, more of a survival mode. As you see, there are several other biomarkers that you will hear about. Uh, AMPK um, 
mTOR, as we've mentioned a couple of times. You may have heard of Raptor. You'll hear of it several times if you watch Dr. Sabatini's um, video. I can't get that all the way up there, but uh, down underneath it's showing protein trans, uh, translation, uh, cell growth, cell division. Uh, another way of, uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, <clears throat> as we have mentioned in other videos, uh, the body fat or adipose tissue uh, releases uh, leptin and adiponectin, things that, that impact growth hormone as well as hunger. Uh, the liver is involved in this process as well. The liver makes IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor, which is another uh, bioindicator or bio, uh, uh, biomarker um, associated with these metabolic pathways. IGF-1, you may remember for, from some other videos, is the problem. It is the genetic defect seen in Laron syndrome. Laron syndrome is um, a genetic dwarfism, which uh, has a very unique characteristic. There's only been one Laron syndrome patient that's ever had diabetes. They just don't get diabetes, high blood pressure, and cancers. Those seem to be associated with much more of the growth phase. Uh, so going straight down from mTORC1 instead of the autophagy phase. Now, why do I bring that up? Again, trying to bring back and connect that dot again that that's why um, fasting, whether you're talking about fasting mimicking, uh, intermittent fasting, um, and even actually uh, caloric rest re restriction. All of these have been shown to improve longevity. And how do you improve longevity? You decrease diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, and the other chronic diseases. How do you increase them? Uh, you eat too much and you uh, suffer from obesity. So again, that's why we're uh, going where we're going. This, uh, this image actually shows some um, some other views of similar path and, and the same pathways. It also actually talks about some of the supplements that have been tried in the past, resveratrol, um, curcumin, uh, some other things, uh, caloric restriction and exercise, which are not supplements. But again, we'll get to those a little bit later. I want to uh, spend the rest of this time focusing on a video by Dr. David Sabatini. Dr. Sabatini, as I mentioned, is at uh, Harvard and MIT now. He started at my alma mater, Johns Hopkins. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But he spends a lot of his uh, first part of his presentations talking about rapamycin. Uh, as we've mentioned a couple of times, rapamycin was actually discovered in the South Seas in an island called Easter Island. You recognize it probably. Um, I think everybody's going to recognize this picture, these uh, stone faces and stone uh, carvings. That's Easter Island. On that island, they happened to discover 60 years ago, 80 years ago, a uh, bacteria. From that bacteria, they isolated this chemical, rapamycin. And uh, they found out later on rapamycin actually has been very, very uh, much used. It was an antibiotic originally. They used it some for antifungus, but it's still being used today to, to improve the longevity of cardiac stents, uh, to keep things from growing cells and, and uh, uh, arterial muscle cells, things like that, growing and blocking a stent in the, in the heart. Um, and they use it for cancer. Now, why would they use rapamycin for cancer? If you go back and you remember some of the impacts, it stops um, cell growth and therefore cell division. Cancer is cell growth and cell division. Cell division is dependent upon cell growth. And we'll, talk, we'll touch on it again a couple more times, I think. Um, this is a picture of a... Uh, of a little marker, which was placed on one of the stones on Easter Island, which basically says rapamycin was discovered here. 
the uh, that marker's been pulled down a couple of times because uh, we uh, the assumption is because it's too western oriented and doesn't give locals enough credit. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Sabatini actually made his own pilgrimage to this site and found the thing had been taken down. I think they put their own um, uh, version of it back up. Um, again, this is a this is a part of the of the video where he's talking about people are hearing about rapamycin and um, longevity. And uh, again, sorry, I can't get it up there too f far enough to read the rest of this. Um, shoot. The rest of this uh, video, but it says rappers who take rapamycin live forever. Um, <clears throat> Saul Snyder, Johns Hopkins, who's a neurologist, head of the neurology uh, unit there. That's where uh, Dr. Sabatini, David Sabatini, got his start. Saul Snyder was focused on very small molecules and their impact on um, uh, nerve growth. You may recognize one in here, nitric oxide, and that was not so much maybe a nerve growth issue uh, that you heard it from, but a uh, health of the endothelium, the intima. FK506 then goes on to become something very much related to rapamycin, which I won't cover right now. Speaking back again of rapamycin, it was uh, credited to Seren Segal at Wyeth Erst. Uh, Dr. Segal was, is considered the father of rapamycin, and he made uh, rapamycin available to the research, uh, David um, Sabatini and the research team there. This part of the video goes into some of the uh, research techniques used by uh, Dr. Sabatini and related researchers in terms of isolating mTOR, breaking it down into uh, TOR complex TORC1, TORC2, which I've mentioned a couple of times, um, and looking at their roles in this activity of cell growth versus um, autophagy. Now, <clears throat> this is an interesting concept and it's something that uh, is worth remembering. Uh, it's simple and it's, uh, it's effective. So it helps you understand, for example, part of the question about cancer in this area. So there are two components uh, to unbridled cell growth. One is growth of the individual cell itself, and then the other is cell division. So when it was first discovered that rapamycin stopped this process, uh, the question then became, well, which does it do? Does it stop individual cell growth or does it stop cell division? Or does it stop uh, both? And again, um, in this video and others, Dr. Sabatini goes on to explain how they differentiated it, discovered it, and said, no, what it, do, it doesn't, um, rapamycin does not stop cell division, it stops cell growth, which is a requirement for cell division. So again, maybe getting a little bit esoteric here, but I hope not. I hope that the, my point here and my desire is to connect the dots between rapamycin or mTOR, which is one of the key um, bioindicators of fasting, which is such a buzz right now, and what it has to do with health impacts. Let's go back. Speaking of mTOR, let me just make a comment. <clears throat> As you'll see if you start reading about these, you, you may ask the question, why would they come up with a name mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin? Why didn't they call it something else? Well, this actually connects the dot back with uh, Dr. Um, Walter Longo's research, as you may remember, uh, he studied yeast cells, did a huge portion of his work with yeast cells, um, uh, nematodes, insects, worms, um, lab animals, uh, rats, and what they found over and over and over again was that um, 
rapamycin tended to, tended to have this impact on cell division and cell growth. So there was a, they knew, an enzyme which rapamycin was impacting, which created this, this issue. Again, uh, the one we're looking at, mTOR, is the, only, is the one that you find in mammals. But yeast had it. Um, roundworms had it, have it. Rabbits have it. Mice have it, etc. That's why it's called mTOR. And again, Dr. Sabatini was uh, instrumental in finding and characterizing that specific enzyme, mTOR. This goes into um, some of the lab proof that they uh, used to show that rapamycin actually stops cell growth, not division. Um, and again, he gets into um, application of this to other diseases like uh, heart failure, um, some neurological diseases, and diabetes, and um, where these, uh, where mTOR and cell growth gets involved. Um, there were several other places where they talked about cancer. I've talked about it as well. Um, <clears throat> here is where they start to get a little bit deeper in terms of differentiating uh, the roles and uh, impacts from mTORC1 and mTORC2. Again, the two components of mTOR. Um, I don't know that there's, oh, there is this one other thing that I did want to cover, and it's a basic concept that you'll hear many, many times. And it connects us back to this dot of fasting. It's catabolism versus anabolism. Anabolism. Anabolic steroids. Same root word, same meaning. Anabolic steroids are uh, androgens, testosterone. It's what uh, you have to watch out. Uh, major scandals associated with athletics and bodybuilding, et cetera, et cetera. Anabolic steroids cause growth of muscle cells. That's why they impact performance. That is cell growth. MTORC, uh, again, is the decision-making point between cell growth and catabolism, which is this cell recycling process. So uh, cell recycling, think smaller, uh, thinner, um, also think no, diabe uh, no diabetes, uh, no cancer. Cell growth, think larger, bigger, big, uh, more uh, athletic performance, but also diabetes and cancer. Also on catabolism, think more longevity. On anabolism, because of its association with um, diabetes, uh, cancers, and chronic diseases, think uh, shorter lifespan. Now, I haven't touched on these two items, fasting and feeding. Again, fasting is the dietary habit that leads more towards catabolism or catabolic uh, metabolism, and feeding leads more to growth, anabolism, hypertension, diabetes, and again, that's the, uh, the dot connection between obesity and diabetes, high blood pressure. Um, <clears throat> again, as usual, I got a little bit exuberant in terms of getting into the details and explanation. If you've made it this far with the video, I really appreciate your uh, interest. Uh, Thank you.